Hello everyone. In my last video, we took a look at downloading and utilizing published survey monuments within Civil 3D. Today we're going to show how that same data can be utilized within Autodesk InfraWorks. So let's get started. Just a reminder, and you can watch the original video, but I went to the NGS, a National Geodetic Survey, at this website, and then went to Data Sheets to find the particular data that I would need. In this case, I downloaded Shapefiles, SHP, for a particular county. So I grabbed all the survey monuments that were published for an entire county. Here's what my download looks like. So I have a shape file representing this entire county. So now over to Autodesk InfraWorks. I let InfraWorks create my model in the cloud for me. I went to the first button here under my models called create a new model using model builder. So this is a tool that will go out and build a 3D model for us. So I just type in my city maybe, zoom into the location I would like drag a box, and then click a name. I'm not grabbing the entire county, just a small piece of the city within the county. So in a few minutes, the model's ready. I don't want to wait on it again. I've already have it downloaded here. So I'm going to click on it. So here's my 3D model for this part of Huntsville, Alabama. So now to bring that shape file in, representing the survey monuments, I'm going to drag and drop, just like Civil 3D. And we get a data source configuration dialog. First thing we need to tell it is the type. It's going to be a point of interest. We're going to use that. And in the general area, I can assign some general attribute mapping. So taking attributes from the shape file into the database of InfraWorks. So for the name, I can say maybe PID. That's the name that I would like to assign for the name. External ID, I can leave that to feature ID under description. Maybe I'll do the order of the elevation, meaning how good is the elevation. Under rule style, I'm going to select the pencil and grab the marker, 3D marker blue. That's how I would like to visualize those points. You can see I have more attribute mapping. Notice geolocation has a coordinate system, so it's going to go to the correct spot. I'm going to drape these on the ground. I'm not going to let it use the elevation. And I'm going to clip to model extent. And all that does is it's, it ignores all the data outside of the window of interest or the size of my model. And that's really important where you can bring in a massive shape file representing in this case like an entire county or even sometimes a state level and it will only show and clip that model to the extents of the 3D model you see behind. We'll come back to tooltip. Under table is where I can do more attribution. I'm going to extend it a little bit further and I'm going to go under user data and I want to actually grab the elevation itself. So this is the elevation inside that shape file for each one of those points. I would like to map that over to InfraWorks as well. Last thing, I'm going to come down to scale, and I'm going to scale that 3D model up twice so it's really clear in the model. So I'm going to hit close and refresh now. So notice here, and I'm going to close this dialog. Notice I don't really see any of those blue markers I mentioned, but as I zoom, they start showing up. So this looks like a GIS level of detail thing where I, I get close enough, they show up. So this is the first tip and trick you're going to need to know when using this type of data. So the way to correct this is to go over to the visibility control here. It's a button just beside the ReD button. And notice here I have a pull down that I can go down to points of interest. This is where I can turn these on and off. I can create a subset. But the one we need here is this level of display or level of detail. It's default to adaptive. I'm going to click it and it turns into maximum level of detail. So what that means is these will show up at any height or any distance away from those points. So now it's very clear where these survey monuments are located. So what can I do with these? Well, you know, I would love to be able to just hover my mouse and have a tooltip pop up with information that I would need for these monuments. My colleague Jeff Bartles did a video series a while back for tooltips and InfraWorks. So I highly recommend it to get into this. But just quickly, I'm going to use his tips and go back to data sources. And I'm going to double click on my points of interest or my survey monuments. And I'm going to go to tooltip. What Tooltip does is it allows us to bring the properties from these names, in other words, the InfraWorks attribute name, and bring that into a Tooltip. So what I would like is the name, because I want the PID to be shown, and I also want the elevation. Well, the elevation is stored as user data, so I want name and user data in my Tooltip. So I'm going to start here on the visual, and I'm going to click on the HTML, make sure my cursor is here. I'm going to click Insert Property, and I'm going to first grab the name. Hit OK. 
And you'll see in Jeff's video, there's a few other ways to do this, but a quick way to put a break. In other words, stack these in rows is to just type the tag BR. Now we're going to enter our second property, which was user data, if you remember. That's at the bottom. User data is going to be equal to the elevation. Okay. Now there's some more proximity settings and some other things like that we can tweak, but I'm not going to worry about that now. Just going to hit close and refresh. And now as I hover my mouse, notice I get the name of the station or the survey monument and the elevation. Now I happen to know that that elevation and the default attribute in this survey monuments is metric. And maybe I would like to see this in U.S. survey feet or international feet. So let's tweak that. So I'm going to go back, same place, points of interest, double click. I'm going to go back to the table tab and under user data elevation, I'm going to click my cursor and instead of the pull down, I'm going to click on this expression editor. So I want the elevation, but I would like to convert this to metric and I would also like to round it to two decimal places. Under functions, math, I have a round option. So I'm going to double click to put that in here and my number is actually going to be this elevation, so I'm going to control X, copy that, and put this where it says number, because that's the number I'd like to round is the elevation. And you can see how it picks the smart property of the elevation. But I also want to do some math, and you can see under operators in math, the standard star is going to be your multiplication, so I don't need to click it. I can just type that star. And to convert that over to U.S. survey feet, I'm just going to type 3.2808333 comma and then after the comma it asks for the optional number of decimals and that's just going to be two so i'll take out all that to where my parentheses match and if you hit okay and this the format was incorrect if you missed a space somewhere it will warn you let's try it hit okay no warnings that's a good sign so let's click close and refresh and now when i hover over my point i get 658.29 as that elevation let's check it i'm going to go to the data sheet that i already have open here's the data sheet on the ngs page Remember that original metric elevation for the orthometric height was 200.65. We converted that to 658.29. That matches perfectly. So there's a lot of value to having this data in here, especially on a recon. Just an example, I'll double click the ground next to this point, zoom into here. And you can see as I double click to the ground, it will lock me at that elevation. And I may pop up just a little bit holding the middle button mouse and moving it up. So what I could do here is I could basically see what other control points or survey monuments would be in my field of view if I was set up here. So these two are definitely candidates. This point here you can see is over the hill. So that probably be too far vertically and maybe even horizontally. Notice across the highway here, that's a definitely a candidate. It's going to be close. We've got a little bit of elevation change. As I look up, because I have building data here, I actually get a, a nice representation of what would be behind a building. You can see these two points here and here would be blocked by buildings. This point here, you can see as an elevation may be a problem because I can't see the tip of that marker. And again, we're just approximating here because this is a USGS DEM surface, so it's not perfect. You know, there's going to be localized contours that are missed. But in general, we could get an idea from what I could see from this location. So the goal today was to continue on our utilization of survey monuments in Autodesk software. Last time we did uh, Civil 3D, and today we went through some examples for Autodesk InfraWorks. I hope this has been beneficial. Have a great day.